All right. So in the last video, I set up this zoom. Now for animating frame by frame in the way we're going to learn how to do it, which gives us the most control, it makes the most conceptual sense, even though it's not the most efficient. We are going to have two Photoshop files open. So far, we've been building onto the assets file. And already I have, you know, over 10 layers just with all these zoom shots. What's nice about my assets file is I can set up the image the way I want. So for instance, if I want my creature to change, I can just make a duplicate of it and then transform it. And it depends on the kind of change I want. And then I can even rotate it, right? And so I have these two assets now. I can even keep it as a smart object as long as I'm not doing like any erasing. And then I turn on my background and I decide, okay, what's the, the framing I want? And that's the background I want. And then I'm going to hold down option on my assets and then say layer merge visible. And this is like taking the photograph of the scene you've set up for a stop motion picture. And then you get that photograph floating on top without destroying any of the layers underneath. Now I need to move that photograph and print it to the film. So I copy it all. Command A, just this one combined layer. Command A to select it all. Command C to copy it all. And then go to my stage file where I've already printed seven frames and just command V to put that new frame in. Now I go back to my assets file and I hit command D to deselect and then delete that merged frame. And then I build my next frame with new assets. So I might transform this guy again. I might shrink him down and rotate him a little bit more and maybe move him a little bit. So this was the movement cycle. It went from this to this to this of this creature, just in three frames. And then I'm going to turn on the next background. And then I'm going to hold down Option, say Layer, Merge Visible. If you want a shortcut for that, it's Shift-Command-E. That's kind of a tricky three-key shortcut. And it's I just go up to layer and find it, right? As long as you're holding down option, because otherwise you'd have to hit option, shift, command, E, which is a lot. So I hold down option and then click this. Once it's merged, command A selects it all, command C copies it all, and then I move to my stage and command V pastes it in. And it's important to have these guides on so that it always pastes directly on it and centered. Okay, now that goes through all of my zoom cycle that I created last video. So if I deselect, get rid of this, those are my assets. I can save my assets. And now I can move to my stage and I can actually see how these frames work as an animation. And all I need to do to do that is click on these eyeballs. But it's hard to look at the eyeballs and look at the image at the same time. So what we do is we call, we run an animation test. And we only ever run animation tests on the stage. To do that, we go up to Window, and we go to Timeline. This is the tool in Photoshop that allows us to create animations. And again, all this is going to do is program this little eyeball next to our layers. And we're not going to do a video timeline, which is more like iMovie or Clip Studio. For movie files, we're going to do a frame animation because we're controlling each frame. So click on that little drop down when you first open the timeline window, say create frame animation, then click on that. Then you're going to click on the timeline window options, which is that little hamburger in the upper right hand corner of the window. And then you're going to say make frames from layers. So frames are different than layers. Layers are for assets. Frames are for your stage. Frames are the, the film scenes. So I want to make the frames from these layers that I merged over and brought over from assets. The first frame, and I would keep this, that's like your test frame, that's blank white. So you're reminded, I had 
nine layers, actually 10 layers, right? One's blank background. That gave me 10 frames in the timeline. This is like the film strip I'm looking at. I can cut that. I can cut out the, the white. And when I do that, I don't hit delete. So look at the difference. If I click on this and then hit delete, what did it do? Not what I wanted it to do, right? And if I actually select the layer and click on this and hit delete, it actually deletes that layer, which I don't want to do either. So when you're on the timeline, it's kind of dangerous. You're in like the editing studio of the animation. You don't ever hit the delete key and still, instead you just drag frames to the trash. That way all of your layers are preserved. Nothing gets changed. And then you want to decide if you like the order of it. So right now, these are the t nine frames I have. My creature doesn't change into the last two frames, right? But the background changes. And I can set this up by selecting each one by holding down shift. I can select all the frames and then I can set a timing for them. And my default timing for, for animatics, for rough animation tests is 0.3 frames per second. So it's just a little bit faster than three frames per second or 0.3 of a second, <laughs> basically a third of a second per frame. Then I'm going to play it through. And then I can just watch it and see what makes sense and doesn't make sense. And not a lot of this makes sense, right? But it kind of shows you how the panning works and then how you can combine it with other frames. Okay, here is the tricky part. We only ever do animation tests on the stage because we don't want to ever risk our assets like Tim Burton and his cases of Jack Skellington heads, you protect those heads at all cost because they're needed for future frames. But this animation test, it taught me something, but it's not everything I need. So I'm going to drag, select them all, drag them all to the trash. And now I'm ready to create more frames. Right? And if I decide, well, that's not telling my story, I'm just going to scrap all these frames and start over but I can keep all of them in my assets. So if I decide I don't want to use a zoom, I'm just going to keep that in my assets and just leave it there. All right. So now we can start my story. And I'm going to start it with the first keyframe, which is this setting. It's at 8 by 8 inches by 100 pixels per inch. So what do I do? I, hold, I say Command A to select it all. Command C to copy it all, go over to my stage, which is empty, and press Command V to print my first frame. And then I save it, Command S. Got one frame of animation. What happens next? I introduce a mosquito, which means I go back to my assets. And I need more assets. I don't have any mosquitoes here yet. So next stage is to bring these found files or to draw up. Oh, this is in the wrong format. Good to know, AVIF format. So let's convert that. Just to do file conversions, I just quickly open them in preview and then say file export as a JPEG. So if they're not JPEGs or PNGs, like you can get from Pixabay, this one's from just from a Google search, right? You want to convert them to that to work easily within Photoshop. So no raw formats, no TIFF formats, no AVIF formats, no HEICF formats, whatever. Okay. There's my mosquito. That's a smart object. It's not quite the right asset yet. I need to clean it up, right? I need to use my compositing skills. And I'm going to erase around it using this contiguous magic wand. But it's animation at screen resolution. And if I hit delete, I'm going to lose a little too much, but I have to rasterize it. So this is where we can play with some other selection tools. Because we're not trying to get 
like a high resolution print of a, a creature. We're just doing something that will be in a quick animation frame. So if my magic wand doesn't work because it deleted too much, right? Because there's so much black. Let's try a different tool. Underneath the magic wand, let's try the object selection tool. See how that works. It's a very basic idea. You just draw a box around the thing that contains the object and it tries to guess what you wanted to keep. It does an okay job. Not great. Does an okay job. And then I can duplicate that. Command J. See what it left me. And you know what? That's going to work. Yeah, part of the wing's missing. And if that's the case, what can I do? I can just use my lasso. Grab that part. Duplicate it. Command J. Onto a new layer. Up, oh, I selected from the wrong place though. Got to be from this layer. Duplicate it. Now I have both of these together. And that gives me an opportunity. Ooh, I can make part of that wing transparent. And I like that transparent wing idea. So I'm going to take my, my brush, my eraser, at a low opacity. And I'm just going to make the wing on top transparent. Maybe not that transparent. <laughs> In fact, maybe I want the neon from this, just select that with my magic wand and contiguous. Hold down shift, get all of these kind of neon greens. Maybe open up my tolerance because it's going really slow. Get all those, all those bright neon colors, the yellows. Maybe even uncheck contiguous, so it just gets the yellow and the neon color everywhere. The bright pink everywhere. right? And then these are going to be the opaque elements, so I'm going to duplicate those. So this is now my asset of my mosquito made of these different layers. And, you know, if I want to be really cool... On all those neon elements I just duplicated, I'm going to double click on it and give it a glow under layer styles. I'm going to make that glow a really bright yellow color, kind of a toxic yellow. Make it a little noisy, and then I'm going to spread it out. Woo! And then I can take, let's shrink that glow a little bit. There we go. So this is my default mosquito. And I'm going to combine all three of those layers with Command E, that rasterize the layer effect. And now I've got my hero mosquito character. So what do I do? I leave this layer alone, but for my other assets, now I duplicate it, I hit Command-T, and I think, okay, how big do I want that mosquito to be? What angle do I want them to be? How do I want them to move? I need them to show up, so I don't want to make it like super small, but I'm going to have it come across the moon, right? Maybe from here. And that's asset one. Next, duplicate it, move it. Asset 2, maybe transform it a little bit. Duplicate it. Transform it. This will be asset 3 in the movement cycle. Duplicate it. Transform it. Asset 4. Boom. Duplicate it. Command J. Transform it. Asset 5. So maybe at this point, I start to give a little bit more space between them. So it's like picking up speed. right? So I duplicate it. Transform it. Just rotating it.
duplicate it, 